Good morning and welcome to our worship service for September 20th. We also welcome those who are watching the Facebook Live presentation. We are Thomas, Olive, Mary, Sawyer. This morning we focus our thoughts on connecting and growing deeper in our relationship with God. We rejoice in the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is the person who obeys the law of the Lord. They don't follow the advice of evil people. They don't make a habit of doing what sinners do. They don't join those who make fun of the Lord and his law. Instead, the law of the Lord gives them joy. They think about his law day and night. That kind of person is like a tree that is planted near a stream of water. It always bears its fruit at the right time. Please join us in saying today's call to worship. Lord, we invite you to speak into our lives so that we might hear and obey your words. Let your roots of truth go down deep, expanding the branches of our influence to others and allowing us to bear your fruit to those around us. Amen. Good morning. Um, thank you for that beautiful song that started. I've never heard it, and it was very touching. Um, and keeping in that theme with the word bearing fruit in our lives, I want to read um, from Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Um, 1 John 2 says, But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We can come to the Lord with our mess, and we can repent and know that we will receive mercy and unconditional love. I invite you to stand with us and put on your mask, and we will sing. And I just want to leave you with this quote. The credit is to McCullough. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Grace tells us that we are accepted just as we are. We may not be the kind of people we want to be. We may have more failures than achievements. We may not even be happy, but we are nonetheless accepted by God and held in his hands.
Good morning. Uh, my name is Jaden Berg. I'm the associate pastor here at Domini Bible Church. I want to also welcome you here this morning. Yeah, whether you're here in person or joining us online, uh, welcome uh, to our service today. Um, we just started our first youth events last week. We had a really fun kick <clears throat> kickoff at Centennial Park. Played some socially distanced foosball and had a fire, and and it was really good. It was really uh, awesome to be able to see the youth again, and we had a great time together. Um, but kickoffs really aren't uh, my jam, mostly because um, with all the, the prep and work that comes beforehand, I'm actually extra nervous about kickoff events. It's like the same amount of work as a regular event, but I'm always just extra jittery, uh, extra nervous. You know, what's the year going to be like? Who are the youth that are going to come out? What are we expecting out of this year? Uh, and then once, once the year gets going, I, I can sort of settle into a routine a bit more, but uh, I... Be- but the week before and the week of our first event, especially this year with all the COVID restrictions that we're working around, uh, I, I was really uneasy. Uh, and what I, what I need to be reminded of uh, every year uh, and throughout the year as well is, is, of God, is God's supernatural peace uh, that he provides us. In John 14, uh, Jesus is comforting his disciples after telling, him, telling them all that someone within them is going to betray him uh, and that he's not going to be around with them very much longer. Uh, and so they're uneasy, they're nervous, they're concerned, and so he promises them the coming of the Holy Spirit, and then in verse 27 he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Uh, In the midst of one of the hardest nights Jesus has ever, or anyone can ever imagine Jesus experiencing, this is what he gives to his disciples, peace. And we're being promised a peace that nothing or no one else in the world can provide. Uh, maybe in the last six months of pandemic, it's left you tired or scared. Maybe the last couple of weeks of school starting up again has been overwhelming. Um, we, can, we can look to the one who has promised us peace and comfort in the midst of our toughest circumstances, and he will provide that for us. A couple of things just to uh, announce this morning. Uh, First of all, we just wanted to thank you for your continued generosity uh, in your giving. It's allowed us to continue moving forward full steam ahead in the midst of the pandemic, as well as continue to support uh, our numerous global partners uh, who receive funding from us. So just thank you very much for your your giving. And we also wanted to thank you 
for your continued patience with us as we work out the kinks and things of technology and, and dealing with live streaming, especially thank you to those who are joining us online uh, and your patience with us as we find the best way to make things work. We really appreciate uh, all of you and, and how you've worked with us uh, over the last couple months as we work uh, through some things. Uh, and finally, the elders uh, will be meeting tomorrow night uh, for an elder meeting. Uh, and so they're going to be spending some time in prayer for our church. And so if you have any specific prayer requests uh, for them, please email them to the church and it'll be passed along to the board. Uh, we're now going to be moving into a time of prayer uh, and to keep with the idea of God's peace being provided for us. Our, our responsive prayer will be, I'll say, God, we pray, and your response will be, thank you for your peace. God, we pray, thank you for your peace. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity again that we have to, to be together, whether in person or online. I thank you for the peace that you provide. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to always be with us, not only growing and shaping us, but also comforting us and helping us and giving us direction when life gets hard or overwhelming. God, we pray, thank you for your peace. We thank you for our global partners who faithfully serve you all around the world. I pray that you would continue to grant them your peace and strength as they spread your message to those around them. Give them wisdom as they uh, navigate different situations, uh, as they comfort those around them who may be dealing with stresses or, or worries about the, the things that are going on. I just pray that you would give them guidance. God, we pray, thank you for your peace. And we pray for families as kids are getting into the rhythm of school, whether that's at public school or it's at home. Uh, all, all the changes and things going on at the start of the year can be overwhelming and exhausting for, for parents and kids. Um, so we ask that you would give them peace and guidance as they navigate new situations. Uh, help them to be lights for you in, in the school context, whether that's at home or at school. Uh, help them to be a light for your peace and goodness in those areas. God, we pray. Thank you for your peace. You are so good, and you are the giver of perfect gifts. And I pray that in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our schools, we would be lights for that goodness and peace to those around us. Um, that we wouldn't just hoard what you've given to us for ourselves, but we'd let it pour out into the lives of others. Um, I just thank you again for everything that you give us and that you supply every need, uh, especially uh, the peace in, in the midst of struggle. Teach us to be good servants for your kingdom. God, we pray, thank you for your peace. Amen. I invite you to stand with us again and put on your masks, and we will sing one more song.
Father, we worship you this morning. We thank you for the name of Jesus. We invite you, Lord, into our hearts. May the words that are spoken today, Lord, may they not pass from one ear to another, but may your word take root in our hearts that we might abide in your love. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. And as we do a transition here from stage to down and around, I just uh, mention a couple things. Um, first thing I want to say is I want to thank the families that, were, that have uh, sent me uh, texts with pictures. Uh, the last few weeks I've, I've received pictures of kids uh, after we had a, a service in our promising series about Jello, I families were eating Jello at their supper table, and I, I talking about it. I got a text this week from someone who uh, uh, made some uh, fruit out of Lego, and that was cool. I appreciate that as well. Uh, we have the uh, the sheets here for you. Those of you at home, they were online for you. For we don't. We realize we're meeting together with one group. It's really hard to do something for everyone, but uh, those uh, activity sheets are meant to for integration and connecting together, and so we hope that that's something you're able to make use of, especially for the kids' sake. Uh, I thank Melissa for putting those together. They're great. I really, really like them. Also, want to just mention quickly, you, you might have saw online that we... Uh, uh, put out an invitation. The elders meet this week, and part of this meeting, our, our meeting, we spend time in prayer for our church family. If you have something you would like us to specifically bring on your behalf before our Heavenly Father, please send that email in to the office, and we will pray for you. Well, last Sunday, uh, I introduced a series called fruitfulness on the front line. And uh, something we're doing also is if you want to join in on Wednesday evening at around at eight o'clock, uh, we had a follow-up to this. And what we did is we prayed at the end of that time of discussion for an increased awareness that God is with us, an awareness that God's there with us in our homes and at school, our work, when we're at play or recreation, when we're volunteering and when we're in our neighborhoods even in our yards, cleaning up. That, and then pray that he would open up our eyes to see how we can be fruitful witnesses of him on these front lines. Well, last week we read in Colossians 1.6, in the whole world the gospel is bearing fruit and growing. So we talked about the gospel. This is the gospel. These aren't my words. But this is the gospel. A holy God sends his righteous son to, un to die for unrighteous sinners so that we could be holy and live happily with God forever. Now, that needs unpacking. And if you have been able to talk with anybody who does not know the Lord, they're not just going to say, oh, wow, yeah, I, I want that. That needs to explaining in the world that we live now. But when you do that, what's happening is when it's received, it's bearing fruit. As we share this message, people hear it, people believe it, and it bears fruit because it brings forgiveness, it brings healing, it brings transformation, it brings hope. That's the one we were praising this morning, Jesus. Well, one of the ways, in Colossians 1.10 also we read that it says, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work. We read that those who trust in Jesus bear good fruit in every good work. Our words, the way we think, the way we act, the motivation of our response is evidence that the gospel has changed our lives. Oh, it's missing something there. Sorry, I should say modeling godly character. I don't know if you can play with that going to edit, but you may want to do that. Well, one of the ways that we bear fruit is we model godly character. And this isn't to add more to your life, more burden. These are just lenses from Scripture that show us how we actually can bear fruit for God. And it, this one way is modeling it through godly character. And this morning, if you would, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 24 a passage that many would assume if they know anything about fruit in Scripture that we would look at this text. But as you turn there, I'm going to stop 
And I think you can turn pages and also hear as we pray together. And I'd like to pray. Lord, as we've already heard this morning, would you give us ears to hear, hearts open to you, expectancy that these words are for us, expectancy that they apply to wherever we're living out our faith. Lord, show us where we have maybe resisted this, forgotten this, times we've seen evidence of it, and that you would create in us a hunger for more of this to take place in our lives as we show the world what you have done for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to read Galatians 5 and 16 to 24. And this is actually from the New Living Translation. In our, in our pews, we have English Standard Version Bibles. Um, like that translation better, not because it switches anything. It's, it's just a little more accurate, but I love the way that this passage flows and helps us understand. So let's listen. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you're not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results, well, they're very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. To summarize this text, our Father in heaven wants to make us more like Jesus. And he's produced the means for this to happen through the Holy Spirit who produces godly character called fruit in our lives so that others will want to taste and see that the Lord is good. He is our rescuer. He gives us life. This past February, the host site for my leadership training, they had a wonderful banquet facility. Not only was it a beautiful facility, but it, what a spread of food. And at the end of our breakfast food line was this, I'm not, it's not hyperbole, this giant table filled with fruit. There was pineapple, there were melons, there were strawberry, there were raspberries, blackberries, grapes, apples, oranges, bananas, all for breakfast. It was the grocery store. Now, I know that all of this fruit that was there was all picked, packaged, and shipped from various places and completely different trees and bushes. But I got to thinking this week, wouldn't it... Kids, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to just grow one tree that would produce all of your favorite fruit? What would you have on your tree? Oh, I could think of all kinds of fruit that I would like to have on that tree. My favorite fruit. Is that possible to do? Can we do that? Could we grow one tree with all kinds of different fruit? Well, have you ever heard of the tree of 40 fruit? Any of you ever heard of it? Here's a picture of it. True story. 
This is not a fake picture. A man named Sam. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. A man named Sam, I am, decided to make a special tree. And he used a process to do this called grafting. Now, he started with one tree, trunk. There it is at the bottom. And he let it grow for several years. And then he would cut an, a branch from another tree or another bush. And he'd make an opening in the main tree. And he'd tape them together so that the veins in the tree could flow water and sugar and minerals between the tree and the branch. If you don't believe me, here's the diagram of the years of his work. Putting all of this together. Now, Sam only used certain types of fruit for this tree. Fruits that have stones or pits inside them. So what would we think of? Plums, peaches, apricots, cherries, those kind of things. And he even grafted almonds onto this tree. And after several years, the branches started to blossom and they would even grow the same different kinds of fruit on one branch. Now, for Sam, he realized that this isn't really functional. You can't do this all across. For him, it was more like an art project. He did it at a time when, uh, right after 9-11, so that he could make, a, make an emphasis that we need to come together. And we need to work together. And these trees are being planted in different locations. There's about eight or nine of them across the United States. And it wasn't that he could make fruit grow better by doing this, because he really couldn't. But he did prove that different fruit can come from the same tree. Jesus told us he's the vine. He's the tree root. And we are his branches. And he wants us to bear all kinds of fruit, not just one. He wants us to reveal through our lives the many ways that he lives in us, that he's changing us, that he works through us. Let's open our ears and our hearts now to the word of God that we read from Galatians 5 to help us understand this better. I read it from another translation, but let's listen and learn from it now as we look at it from the English Standard Version. It says, but I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The evidence that we are grafted into the life of Jesus is the fact that the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. We read in 1 Corinthians 3.16 that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. His presence in our lives is evidence that we have new life in Jesus. And the command here in this text is, because the Holy Spirit lives in us, we are to walk by the Spirit. Now, walking refers to the manner in which you live your life. As the New Living Translation said, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Walking by the Spirit is a transforming process because it's completely the opposite of what we would naturally tend to do. Our natural desire referred to in this text as the flesh, our natural desire is, I don't want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. I got other preferences, other desires. And what happens is it says here, the flesh and the Spirit, they don't get along. They're at war. Verse 17 literally means that the flesh desires to do things that are not according to the Spirit. So we live in this tension. We live in this tension between the Spirit who is present to lead us to become more like Jesus and our fallen human desires and sinful inclinations that still haven't been rooted out of our lives. 
when it says don't gratify the desires of the flesh, there are a number of instances on our front lines in which our response to the circumstances or the people in our work situations, at school, home, our neighbor, maybe a store clerk, a coach, it would be the temptation would be in those situations for us and aren't we prone to do this? To complain, criticize, get impatient, retaliate, gossip, or whatever else we could think of saying or doing to defend ourselves or react towards them. And from a human fleshly perspective, those are pretty normal responses. And sometimes we're even told by people we work with, why didn't you just give them a piece of your mind? Right? Because that's the natural thing to do but they don't reflect the mind and the heart of Jesus. When these attentions, tensions occur on our front lines, we need to ask ourselves, am I being led by the Spirit or am I being led by my flesh? The way to clearly determine the difference between the two comes in the next verses, verses 19 to 21, where it says, now the works of the flesh are evident goes through this long list. There's 19 of them. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry. I'll just skip to the end. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there's 19 things listed here of things that are, things that are not really the ways of God. Some of them are personally destructive. They will destroy you as an individual. But the majority of these sins are often expressed in the context of relationships where we say things and do things that don't make things better but make things worse. Now, I don't see anything in this list that, that lines up with the character of God. Do you? I don't see anything there that lines up with his holiness. It's understandable that we cut caught in the heat of the moment. It's understandable that we get frustrated. It's understand that people hurt us. We're misunderstood. We're misquoted. And sometimes our ideas, our good ideas get shot down. Maybe we feel disrespected. Our goals and our plans get blocked. And sometimes we do almost anything just to be liked or to fit in. When you are connected to the vine... This is not how we bear fruit. Galatians 5, to 24 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Just take note there of what the character of, of, what the character of Jesus is that is here, and what the Spirit wants to form and reveal through our lives. We've heard these before, but these are what we are to focus on. In a previous series that I did, I, I categorized these, these fruit in three different grouping, and I don't mind repeating it and just changing it a bit here for you. The first of these categories would be the fruit, I would call it the fruit of experience. Are these not things that we experience in our lives? They're not, there's also things that we show, but they're things that we experience personally. Love, joy, and peace are internalized as gifts from God towards us. We are recipients of his love. We are filled with his joy and his peace regardless of the circumstances of our lives. His love never leaves us. His joy is always present and we always have his peace. When we bear the fruit of love, joy, and peace to others, it's evidence that God is with us. Think of love. We can be generous to love others because why? He first loved us. Joy allows us to take each circumstance and encounter as an opportunity to declare God's faithful to us in every situation. And peace, which we prayed about this morning, is knowing and letting God be in control. When people see responses of love, joy, and peace in your life as you navigate difficult people, challenging circumstances, they see something that's not natural or fleshly. They see the work 
of the Holy Spirit. There's also the fruit of our conduct. More specifically, these three models of godly character will bear fruit in our relationships on the front lines because, come on, they, re they reflect the character of who God is again. Patience is not only a gracious response to others in their weakness and their mistakes, but it also demonstrates something else. We don't get to control the outcomes all the time. And that our way is not necessarily the only way or the right way. Kindness is responding with the grace that God extends to us. When we speak or act kindly towards someone we disagree with or who has disappointed us or hurt us, we are demonstrating the grace of God that he has shown to us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And not just for that time in our life, but daily when we disappoint him. Goodness. While kindness is an attitude, goodness is the action towards others. Start thinking about the ways in which God has been good to you. And that will determine how you are able to act towards others. There's a third area, and that's the fruit of character. God intended every marriage and home to be built on these characteristics. For your business, some of you that have businesses here, to honor the Lord, these characteristics are essential. And relationships that you have at work, or that you may grow at work, relationships you have with neighbors, on teams with your classmates, maybe even on some subcommittee that you're a part of, when the character of God is evident toward them, it speaks powerfully that God is transforming your life. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is a description of the self-giving sacrifice of Christ who surrendered his life and his will for our lives. It doesn't mean we won't make mistakes but we are trustworthy people. Not in it for selfish reasons, but so that others might discover Jesus more fully. Gentleness is neither the extreme of getting really angry or the inability to be angry. It refers to a person who's in control of their emotions and chooses to act with gentleness in dealing with other people. Above all, gentleness never ever demands its own way. And self-control, well, it's resisting the temptation <laughs> to give in to those deeds of the flesh, to react in those fleshly ways. The common assumption about Christians is that we're negative. We're negative about the beliefs and the life choices of others. That's what they may see that we're doing, that we judge them. Maybe that we come across that we're better than them. But when we bear the fruit of the Spirit on our front lines, what we're doing is we're simply witnessing who Jesus is in us to them. They see the power of God through the godly character that's bearing fruit in our lives. Every one of us here has a challenging setting. I know that you do. I do. It, it's exhausting when you're raising children or working with negative people. I think those are almost equally exhausting in different ways. It's discouraging when you're ignored. It's, ex it's, ex it's discouraging when you just keep getting criticized. It's confusing to experience inconsistent support and inconsistent guidelines. And you know, COVID... This has created a whole new set of challenges for us on our front lines. It, it's affected the way we do relationship and conversation. But God places us in these settings, on these front lines. And in the power and the presence of his spirit, he is there so that we can model the character of Jesus. So, looking back on recent events on your front lines. If you fail to model godly character, ask God for forgiveness and thank him that he promises to continue to be at work in you, bearing good fruit. Ask him 
Ask him this week for that opportunity. Pray that God would shape your character on your front lines this coming week. I'd ask now that if we could just receive our benediction as Carol Peters leads us this morning. Go from here today, receiving the encouragement of these words from Philippians 1, 9 to 11. May your love grow more and more, and let it be based on the knowledge and understanding. Then you will be able to know what is best. Then you will be pure and without blame for the day that Christ returns. You will be filled with the fruit of the living, right living, produced by Jesus Christ. All these things bring glory and praise to God. Amen.